It is my pleasure to welcome families, friends, students, and staff to tonight's annual induction ceremony into the Appomattox County High School chapter of the National Honor Society. I enjoy this day tremendously and am pleased and proud of the accomplishments of today's inductees. You are most deserving and I offer my sincere congratulations. Thank you for all the ways you have enriched Appomattox County High School. I am happy for you and your families and I am proud of you. Please allow me to share a few brief remarks. I want to start by saying thank you all for being here tonight and for spending a few moments listening to my ramblings. I think that I have a few things to share based on my tenure in education, but I'll try not to bore you with all of that. Instead, I'll start with a confession. <clears throat> I was never myself in the National Honor Society. Then again, I never took an AP exam when I was in high school either, so I can't tell you how proud I am of each and every one of you. Educators such as myself don't dream of climbing Mount Everest or sailing around the world. We dream of being appreciated by our students. We dream of our students listening to us even when they don't have to, and that's no easy goal. I don't remember appreciating many of my teachers when I was in high school. They were just there, in front of the classroom every day, doing what they did. Sometimes I found their lessons really interesting. Many times I found them really boring. It wasn't until I became a teacher that I realized how difficult it was to be on for 180 days per year. We all have a hard time appreciating the things to which we've grown accustomed to. Whether it's the support of our parents, the blessings of living in a community such as Appomattox, or the hard work of our teachers. All of these things are just there, so we tend to overlook them. As I was preparing this speech, I found inspiration from Malcolm Gladwell. His book, Outliers, The Story of Success, profiles 75 exceptional individuals, the best in their chosen field. He studied such outliers and found that being smart or talented did not necessarily translate to success. In fact, he found at least two shared characteristics that set the best apart from the bunch. One is that they amassed the equivalent of 10,000 hours of practice before reaching the pinnacle of their careers. In other words, Leo Messi didn't just stroll onto the soccer field and dominate it. And Yo-Yo Ma certainly did more than half-heartedly pluck at his cello in between marathon fortnight sessions. They spent hours, days, weeks, and years working unbelievably hard to achieve greatness, harder than the others who merely became good. The other common factor is that the great ones were all provided with and took advantage of unique opportunities in their lives. Bill Gates, for example, was given the unprecedented access at the age of 13 to tinker with a powerful mainframe computer. More recently, a sixth grader named Thomas Suarez was invited to give a TED Talk on the successful iPad apps he deployed, one of which is an incredibly gratifying Justin Bieber whack-a-mole game to bargain at only 99 cents. Thomas was able to program these apps because he had a passion and did his own research. And when he asked his parents to pay the $99 fee to access Apple's software development kit, they said yes. And now millions of people with pent up Bieber rage are able to vent their frustrations by furiously poking at his sweet little face on a high resolution touch screen. Though he cited Steve Jobs as an inspiration, Thomas actually spends time giving back to his community, sharing his knowledge with his classmates and teaching classes on programming. The fact that you will be on this stage today is proof that you have worked diligently and made the most of the opportunities afforded you by your parents, 
your school, and your community. Now comes the part of this address where I offer you advice. So here goes. I urge you to continue to embrace opportunities that by grace will be interrelated throughout the fabric of your lives. Reach out for internships and don't let fears eclipse your ability to see the blips of opportunity pulsing on the radar of your future. Find a cause and be relentless. Be inspired to set the bar higher until you're doing the impossible because you just refuse to quit. The world needs creators, educators, innovators, and you are tomorrow's game changers. So don't let the doubts of others limit you. Don't give your fears the power to inhibit you. Rather, find the thing you're passionate about, the thing you cannot do without, the thing you can't do, and do it. Pursue it. If you love dancing, pirouette. If you're an artist, grab a palette. If you're a writer, then immerse yourself in words. And if physics is your thing, well then, keep playing Angry Birds. Don't just make a living, make a difference. Give back to your community. Enrich each life you encounter and leave your own indelible mark on history. But you can't make history with just sitting around. It takes persistence and all of the courage you can muster to not just step, but leap outside your comfort zone, outside the confines of your community. Leap into the world and identify a skill you have and master it. For if you don't, you will eventually regret it. Take the first step, blaze a trail. No one will taunt you if you fail, but they will cheer you when you win because you pushed through to own it. Leap towards scholarship, towards leadership, towards serving. Spend every waking second learning, questioning, observing. And remember, everyone deserves a smile and respect. If you live your life with empathy, integrity, and class, there is no limits to the gifts you will earn. As long as your passion guides you, and your character drives you to constantly work hard to accomplish the things you never knew you could, then at the end of every day, I hope you will close your eyes and say to yourself, not only did I do well, I did some good. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kelsey Bowman, and I would like to introduce myself as one of this year's National Honor Society sponsors for Appomattox County High School. Myself, along with Amy Hostler, have really enjoyed working with these special young people this year, even though the challenges we have faced with the effects of COVID-19. This year, we have an amazing group of young people being inducted into the National Honor Society, and we are very proud of each of them. The faculty and staff see great potential in all students at Appomattox County High School but these NHS members have soared to the forefront. They also have bright futures ahead of them. We have come here today to honor the accomplishments of these students, and it is my privilege to do so now. I would like to start by speaking to the current NHS members who were inducted one year ago. To continue to be a member of the National Honor Society, students must maintain the high national standards set forth by the National Honor Society. Not only must students keep a high grade point average, but they are expected to participate in acts of community service. Over the summer and throughout the fall, current members have reached out to the community in the following ways. STEAM Summer Academy, Vacation Bible School, 4-H Camp, Volunteering for Gleaning for the World, Walking Dogs for the Appomattox County Humane Society, distributing food with By His Hands Ministry, and sponsoring trunks for local church trunk or treats, just to name a few. These students have shown dedication to both their academics and their community. They deserve recognition. To our current NHS members, continue to show your academic excellence and your dedication to the community. 
Your hard work should not go unnoticed. Now, Amy Hostler will continue with the officer introductions and congratulations. Officers, I thank you so much for your dedication and carrying out your responsibilities this year. It has been a pleasure working with each of you, and you are each dedicated, special young people. I would like to introduce your NHS officers. Ellie Peterson, President. Shantasia Richburg, Vice President. Cameron Womack, Secretary. Tatum Harris, Treasurer. Carrington Vrooman, Parliamentarian. I would also like to offer my congratulations to each member of the National Honor Society. You're all doing an excellent job in preparing for your future by working diligently, diligently in each of these areas. Scholarship, service, leadership, and character. Don't ever lose sight of these traits, as they'll take you far in life. Now, I'll ask Ellie, our president, to light the front candle representing the eternal light of knowledge. I'll turn the program over to her. The induction of new members into the National Honor Society is an important event for our students, our chapter, and our school. Membership in the National Honor Society represents high levels of achievement. Our purpose is to create enthusiasm for scholarship, to stimulate a desire to render service, to promote leadership, and to develop character. Our officers will now light candles representing the four qualities held in high esteem by the NHS. After they light these candles, they will review these qualities for our inductees. Scholarship means a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education is ended, for education ends only with life. Knowledge is one great element in life which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past and the light which illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. Service can be described in various ways. In the routine of a day's work, many opportunities arise to help others. Willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or work without recognition is the quality we seek in our membership. We are committed to the idea of volunteering our time and abilities to the creation of a better tomorrow. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking the initiative in class and school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to attain the same objective. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willingness to yield, to yield one's personal interests for the interest of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a country, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is an indisputable charge to each of our members and to the candidates. Character is the force within each individual which distinguishes that person from others. It gives each one individuality. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is this force of character which guides one through life, and when once develops, grows steadily. Character is achieved and not received. 
Character is the product of constant action, daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the pr problem of self-control. We must be in reality what we wish to appear to others. By demonstrating such qualities as reliability, honesty, and sincerity, we may hope to prove by example that we value culture. We will hold the individual inductions at a later time. Due to the governor's restrictions, we are unable to hold a ceremony including all inductees at one time. I would like to again congratulate all of the newly inducted members of the National Honor Society of Appomattox County High School. Thanks so much.